Hey everybody, you're about to join a chat with Alicia and I about something we've all been experiencing, and that is stepping out of our comfort zone. We have been cocooning, and now we are breaking free, emerging from the cocoon, and our wings are about to fly. So this conversation, Alicia, we covered so much information and shared personal experiences and what you might be feeling and thinking and what to release and baby steps on how to move through the discomfort of moving out of our comfort. Yeah, so we hope that you'll hang with us during this conversation. We'll give you some ideas of how to stretch yourself gently if that's how you want to do to challenge your comfort zone or even just cliff dive and just dive into it but we talk about what your comfort zones are and some ways to identify what they are if you're not if you're not sure so it's a good conversation we hope you enjoy it Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chicks Talking Shift. I'm Angel. And I'm Alicia. Hello, Alicia. How are you? I'm good, Angel. Gosh, lots of stuff stirring around. Oh, how about this crazy world? <laughs> just, <laughs> just never know what's going to happen next. I think I need to get on one of Elon Musk's rockets and head out of this place because it's getting really freaky. <laughs> It is. They can't ship us to Mars fast enough. <laughs> right. But never uh, saw myself as a Mars colonist before now. <laughs> that's funny. We need There's another planet to change. <laughs> <laughs> this one's getting a little frustrating. <laughs> it's like, uh, that's so funny. Oh, it's, it's crazy what's going on. <sighs> Yeah, all we can do, I mean, really is send some good energy to those parts of the world, but they're so close to home. It's closer than we think. We think it's happening over there. It's really impacting all of us, especially those that are empathic. This is just not the direction we should be going in, or I feel we should be going in at this time. All we can do at this point is continue to keep our energy in a positive place, keep our energy in a loving space and not into the fear. There are so many people, oh my gosh, it's going to start another world war. Oh my God. You know, and then we can really buy into all that, which is contagious and we know how it expands. So we can also expand through the vibration of love. And that's what I invite us all to do. Yeah, very well said because stay out of the trenches, right? Because the 3D is which one's right, which one's wrong. It's political. It, granted, there's some horrendous things going on. But the 5D is acknowledging, yes, all of that is happening. But bottom line is there is humanity on both sides that is suffering. You know, even with things like sanctions, it doesn't hurt Putin or the oligarchs that are really wealthy. It hurts the regular people. So there's a lot of there's a lot of horrendous stuff going on in Ukraine, but there's also a lot of Russian suffering as well. There's people, there's Russian troops that didn't want to go there. So just holding space for all the suffering of humanity that's happening and just trying to stay in that higher place to support them energetically. I think that's the best thing that we can do, especially for just somebody like myself that's just a normal person. I'm not in politics. I can't make different decisions. So I choose to energetically support that way. And I think you're exactly right. I think that's the best way to go about it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people being thrown out of their comfort zones, living life one day and the next day, their country's at war. I imagine very much like that, how we've all been thrown out of our comfort zones. We were just going about living life and then boom, there was a pandemic. It started, you know, in China and then it just kind of spread across the globe little by little because it was in China. It was like, it's happening over there. 
Well, it didn't take long for it to impact my happy little world. And before you know it, I was thrown out of my comfort zone and forced to stay home like everybody else in quarantine and lockdown and all that stuff. Our comfort zones have changed. And you and I started this, this conversation about this a few days ago. The deeper we got into the, the topic of comfort zones, we thought, hey, this, this would be worth recording. To create awareness around the comfort zone that we've been in and been thrown out of and what's preventing us from moving and stepping out of that comfort zone because what the pandemic has done for us is we've created new comfort zone. <laughs> we, we create a new normal of being at home and, and being kind of lazy and comfortable. It's changed us. I think the topic around our comfort zones uh, is really important because there's no growth and evolution that happens with comfort zones. I want to know your thoughts. How would you define a comfort zone for somebody who's maybe never heard that term before? Well, I can, I can only define it for myself. And so when I think of comfort zone, it feels like a safe place. It feels like there's really no stress. It's a place of ease and often a place of routine. That's where I go with it. How about you? It is a place of safety and security. I thought about this just the other day. Like, what is the in the zone feel like versus out of the zone when I'm out of the comfort zone? In the zone is a time of resting mm. and a time of the known, knowing and content and complacency. And Brad used a great word. He said predictability. It's when you know what's expected. Yeah. Uh, whereas out of the zone, it's adventurous. It's more explorative, new experiences. There's more growth and evolution happening outside of the zone. I noticed my brain activity changes when I'm outside of that comfort zone through neuroplasticity because our brain gets activated mm -hmm. when we're doing and trying new things and seeing new places and meeting new people and being challenged. I don't know if the comfort zone is, is a negative thing as much as it's sometimes needed just to rest before we go back out and we go through that growth phase again. I think it's part of that cycle that we go through. And right now, if we're looking at humanity, <laughs> many of us have been in this comfort zone. And I think it's time for, for the growth to start kicking in. I think we've, we're starting to realize the growth that has come from all the changes now it's a matter of how, how does our comfort zone look now and what do we want to experience so that it makes this comfort zone worthwhile, you know, worth having. I've had the rest. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm tired of sitting on my couch. You know, I'm ready to start living life and start making a difference again and getting out, speaking and going to events and traveling and getting back to life. And I think a lot of people are in that place too. It's interesting, while you were saying that, all of a sudden, you said something about, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I saw it a little bit more fluid than necessarily being a separation between the two. Mm. Because when I'm thinking about what's happened over the last couple of years, all of us have been pushed out of our comfort zones. But also at the same time, we've also developed new comfort zones as a way of being able to cope with all the discomfort and uncertainty around us. It reminded me what flashed through me was the thought of when I'm talking to couples, you'll often hear a relationship is 50-50. Well, that would be great, except rarely is it 50-50 because a relationship is dynamic, it's organic. So sometimes one of you is going to have more needs than the other. And so it might be 30, 70 or 60, 40, and that just ends up being really fluid. So I think maybe our comfort zones are kind of like those interconnected Venn diagrams that flows in and out of different things. And you were talking about what it felt like to be in and what it felt like to be out. And when I think about being out of my comfort zone, I think about discomfort, <laughs> right? It's the discomfort zone and being stretched and being challenged and definitely where the growth is. I wouldn't say that you can't grow in your comfort zone at all, 
I think you probably can, but uh, uh, there's a lot of stagnancy there a lot of times. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the circumstances and what you're challenging. So that was kind of some of the things that flowed through me when, when I was listening to you talk about that. I'm Alicia with Chicks Talking Shift. If you'll take a moment and hit the subscribe button, then you'll get our videos as soon as they come out. If you haven't joined us yet on our Chicks Talking Shift page or our Chicks Talking Shift Vibe Tribe group on Facebook, We'd love it if you join us over there. And remember, we're also on Instagram too. So come join us, check us out and share some of what's been going on in your life. We'd love to hear from you. Doesn't, doesn't it feel like as a humanity right now, we're breaking out of the cocoon? Yes. I mean, like we've been cocooning for the past couple of years and now we're starting to emerge out into this new world and that other world as we were crawling around doesn't exist. Now we're, we're going to be flying. We'll have wings. We'll have different perspectives because it's a different perspective when you're flying from the sky versus walking on the ground. So I really do feel like the comfort zone has been uh, a good place for us to be for the time being. And it's opened our eyes to a lot of truths and different perspectives. I do feel like, <laughs> like a little butterfly starting to get my wings ready get it because the, i mean the world's starting to open up in some different ways now what does it look like when you're a butterfly in the new world because so many things have changed there's a lot of redefining going on part of that process as we start to peek our heads out a little bit and our our wings are are drying is figuring out who do we want to be in this next world that's a conversation I've had with several people lately about, I was talking about, gosh, I was trying to think about what I used to do before the pandemic and who I did it with. And all of a sudden I realized it's been so long, I couldn't remember. And then I started realizing that one of the tendencies is to want to go back to that thing. Let's go back to what we were doing. And all of a sudden I realized, no, Alicia, don't just go back and do what you were doing before. Find a new way to define yourself and try to do some things in a different way to redefine yourself and to move into a new space. I'm looking at it as a bright, shiny new world. Granted, there's some darkness and there's a bunch of diff difficulty. I can't do a bunch of stuff about that. All I can do is manage my inner world and bring as much light and be light as much as I can. What are we going to be and how are we going to be it? And if we are stepping into some new places, how do we handle stepping out into the discomfort zone? Okay, so how this conversation started about the comfort zones is I shared with you that a friend of mine had sent me a video that was of this MMA fighter, this guy all buffed and, and tatted up and just tough and you that showed all these clips of him. He's all bloody, broken bones. It was about 15 minutes long. When I was watching it, I was really taken. I don't know exactly why she sent it to me. It was probably pro for the result that ended up happening. But he was telling his story. And so he started with the MMA fighter thing. And he's 40. And he knows that his, you know, his time's probably coming to an end as far as doing that. And he found that he was getting depressed. So his MMA coach told him, he said, I would like you to take an emotional intelligence class so that you can learn about vulnerability. He started that class. He realized that he was always going to be an artist, regardless of, of what he did. He ended up starting to paint. And through that painting, he started getting a little bit more recognition. The painting started building on the MMA career. Then he was taking that even deeper and trying to figure out how he could challenge himself to get out of his comfort zone. Well, for whatever reason he did it, he ended up deciding to do a drag show. So here you got this buff dude with all these tats and all that stuff, starting to do a drag show and six inch spikes and just all this stuff. And he called himself, because he's Dos Pistoles as an MMA fighter, and he started calling himself Lola Pistola. And by the end of the video, I realized that he 
the things that he were doing between MMA fighting, between being an artist, and now also doing drag shows, he had set up a bunch of contrasts in his life that challenged his comfort zone because what MMA fighter is going to do a drag show, right? You're all buff, you're all macho, all that. And how much blowback would you get from that? Well, he had the courage to do it. And what ended up happening is that once he became Lola Pistola as well, that started amping up his artist career as well as his MMA fighter fighting career. I just realized by the end of it, it put in my mind, Alicia, don't go back to what you did and what you were. Some of that will come with you. But consider the contrast that seem almost impossible from that old world. Use that as courage to light a fire for the new world. Find those contrasts of those things that maybe you were shoving in a, in a compartment somewhere because that wasn't the right fit for the thing that I thought I was going to be and try to start to challenge that. This has just been a recent thing for me. And so I'm still kind of simmering as to what all that means. But that was what I was telling you about that video. And that was what was had started the conversation was the contrast of having the courage to be one thing, but also stepping out in another way. And so I've still got that in my belly. I'm still feeling that. And I'm still simmering with it to see where have I shorted myself in the past and where might I where might I fly in the future in ways that I would never allow myself to consider before. I see a book in your future. <laughs> I think you should be in your spare time, be writing your book. <laughs> yeah, I think the world would benefit from a lot of the wisdom that's inside you stepping out in a in a bigger way, like Alicia the author or Alicia the pole dancer. I don't know. It's got kind of... <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> I do know. <laughs> All of the above, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'll sell more books as the point. I've got my belly dancing belt. There you <laughs> I've go. Done a little bitty belly dancing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, just because yeah. I wanted, well, it was all pre-pandemic, right? I wanted to bring out some of my goddess. And I think swiveling the hips and manipulating that spine and those hips, I think, allow some energy to rise up in us that sometimes gets trapped from sitting too much or just no, no swivel. So yeah, pole dancing. Wow. <laughs> hey, there's a little pole dancer in all of us, right? No. I love that story. It's inspiring. I think what the pandemic has done is it has taken away a lot of the expectation, that societal expectation of what you're supposed to be and who you're supposed to be and what that's supposed to look like. And that's the last thing I would expect to see at a drag show is, you know, some MMA fighter up there in stilettos. See, but I think a lot of people are now, they're like, I don't care about my chief executive title. And now they've had a chance being in their comfort zone of being somebody else, exploring life in a different way, that people are just changing their passion. I saw a statistic on LinkedIn with the increase of female entrepreneurism is skyrocketed because women are realizing, it's like we're stepping into our power, realizing we can give and be and do so much more that is more purposeful, more meaningful. Yeah. So that MMA guy, that story is inspiring firing in a way where he just had the courage to say, I don't give a crap what anybody thinks about me. That is stepping out of the comfort zone. And, you know, comfort zone is defined as a place or a situation where one feels safe or at ease and without stress. Yeah. <laughs> the level at which one functions with ease and familiarity. I can't say that word. Familiarity. Thank you. You say it. <laughs> Well, that's the predictability that Brad said, right? Yeah, Familiar yeah. Familiarity would be another uh, similar word to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When have you shifted out of your comfort zone, maybe had to step out and do something you weren't used to doing? One of the ones that just looms always in the forefront of my mind is because it was so shocking to me years ago, we've talked about it on the podcast before my friends and I were having conversations about things that we wanted to do. And at the time we were hiking and we were talking about, we were aging. 
And we came up with a phrase that to be a healthy senior, you have to be a healthy junior. And so we decided that we were going to start challenging ourselves with physical challenges. We were going to start doing really strenuous hikes, climbing mountains, doing things like that um, to try to challenge ourselves. Well, the truth is I'd never really done anything physical before. I didn't play sports or anything like that. We decided that the first thing we were going to do was we were going to hike the Grand Canyon. And so I started training for that. And because I had never done that before, I ended up finding out things about my physical and mental state that I could have never found out without challenging myself in that way. I realized that there's something really unique about my body and being able to show up and do whatever it needs at, at any time without really any difficulty changing gears or no even no even no mental stress. And the other thing that I learned was how easily I can compartmentalize my fear just to focus on the task at hand. So we ended up doing some, pr some pretty challenging and some dangerous hikes. And I didn't realize that I was able to compartmentalize fear in the way that I did, nor that my body was as strong and capable as it was. So for me, that was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone because one of the, one of the phrases I learned when we were training for, uh, to do the hikes was you don't want to suck hind tit, right? You don't want to be the one on the back end holding everything up. And I knew that I didn't want to be the slow one, but at the same time, I didn't know about my capacity to doing it. And the only way to do it was to step through it. I ended up learning so much about myself that ended up building a lot of confidence in me in ways that I never did before and just kind of push through the fear, which is always helpful to have a partner, accountability coach, or somebody that's there as support to help encourage you to do that thing that you really want to do when you don't feel like maybe you've got enough steam or enough courage to do it on your own. And that was one of the things that was really helpful in those circumstances was having some girlfriends that I knew that I wanted to be accountable to and didn't want to slow their trip. And then when I looked back at it, I'm like, huh, why were you so concerned that you would be able, that you wouldn't be able to do that? And the truth is, is because I didn't know I could. I had never stepped out in that way before. So that was one of the that was one of the comfort zones that I stepped out of that has been almost an anchor for me to consider other comfort zones that I that I wanted to step into. And as you well know, doing this podcast and doing videos was a huge challenge for mm -hmm. me and on some level is still intimidating. That's a great story. I could so relate to the accountability buddy to to help you push through it, you know, just starting to be a runner. I just started running last year. Yeah. I would have thrown in the towel <laughs> had it not been for my running coach, you know, to say, oh, that's normal. It'll get better. Your heart will improve. Breathing will get easier and your heart will get strong. As your heart gets stronger, your lungs get stronger. It holds more capacity for air. So it's difficult now, but it's going to get better. You'll see. And so I had something to look forward to and, and just the encouragement and, you know, going at my pace. And then before, you know, I'm running races and I'm placing in the races and I'm like, wow. I mean, it, it's amazing what can happen when you step out and try something new and have that person at your side. Cause I, I probably said, this is too hard. I can't breathe. I, I'm sweating too much. You know? <laughs> and, and you're not sweating, you you're glistening girl. Yes. <laughs> well, and I, was, I watched you on that journey too. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, it has been really inspiring for me because you've been living a freer life down in Florida than I have in my life circumstances here. So I've been much more cocooned than you have. And so, and I've been sitting a lot, not as active as before and seeing you start to run and seeing you place in those races and seeing the changes in your body, the changes in the mindset, the things that you started to understand yourself was very inspiring and helped me realize it was a mirror for me of, all right, Alicia, you've been sitting long enough. It's time to start doing something different. I think that 
challenging your comfort zone can inspire others. It's very, like you said earlier, contagious. Yes, it is. And you do it when you don't even, you don't even realize. Because we're all role models for someone. Somebody's always watching. The risks that I have taken have always paid off. Always. I I can't think of one that hasn't, even when, uh, you know, perceived failure occurred. Uh, But dating, dating was something I was divorced 10 years. I didn't even date. I didn't want to date. I was kind of afraid to date. I was just comfortable being by myself. I really enjoyed my own company with my dog. And I was good uh, just on my spiritual journey, my connection with spirit and just writing my books and all that. That was, I was very comfortable in that space, having my goddess girlfriends. And then I started dating and put myself out there. I talk about vulnerability for the first time in, you know, since my twenties, I felt that was another instance of getting out of my comfort zone, which I would imagine People who have been cooped up for a couple of years, who are now ready to start dating those single people out there, uh, that's not an easy thing because everybody, you've changed. The people you're, you're sitting across the table from have changed. Well, it's interesting because I've got other goddess sister friends that have done the same thing. And, you know, I've been married for 30 years. So, you know, what do I know? I get to learn how things are in the world vicariously through them. So I get new information to realize how much things have changed since I dated. But they have said many of the same things that you've said along the way. It can be very intimidating. It's just a completely different world. Dating isn't easy to begin with. I don't even know if I'd want to date, you know, with all that I've heard. But yet at the same time, I see what's gone on with you and the beauty that's come into your life And if you never would have done it, you would never have these blessings, right? So I think that's part of stepping outside the comfort zone. When you do, you reap some rewards on the other side that you could have never gotten had you not challenged yourself to either dive in wholeheartedly or to take a baby step to that. And to your point, you have had a lot of challenges lately and you've inspired me in so many different ways, moving across the country. I was watching something the other day on television and I realized that I, before I got married and was in this, was in this marriage, I'd never lived anywhere longer than three years at once. And so now I've lived in the same place for 32 years in the same house. Before I used to very easily and very fluidly move from place to place. There wasn't any kind of apprehension or insecurity. And watching you, I started thinking, hmm, what would that feel like at this age? And at a place where I've been super settled and very in my comfort zone, how would that feel? I feel like it would be really stressful, especially if you move to another state where you don't know where the grocery store is or the post office. You don't have any friend. Maybe you don't have any friends. Maybe you're moving closer to your friends. I don't know. But it, it makes me feel really insecure. And all of a sudden, I realized, ah, you're not as flexible as you used to be. And that bothers me, right? That's one of the things that can push you out of your comfort zone. Because now that I've seen it, I kind of want to challenge it because being in that comfort zone in that way makes me feel weak and vulnerable. The funny thing is stepping out of the comfort zone can make me feel vulnerable. So I can be, I can, Mm -hmm. I can be the same thing in both places. True. So uh, you and Marty are going to be selling your house, moving to Florida, (laughs) right? (laughs) Well, I'm going to come down. Like everybody else. (laughs) Everybody else across the country. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. shaking up the snow globe of life right now, going, let's move to Florida. <laughs> Come on down. What the heck? Angel's there. We all go. Right. Together. Angel did it. <laughs> we can do it too. But I'm sure there's a lot of people who have been just who uh, have stayed in the place that they grew up and bought the house, you know, in the same neighborhood. And and then they're just saying, forget this. Let's do something totally different. And and people are doing it. They are shaking up that snow globe of life, as my friend Leslie always says. And I've heard that that quote before, and I love it. Another example that comes to mind is I recently went to a networking event. And I realized I had not been out networking since before the pandemic. 
maybe maybe a virtual thing here and there. But then I was like, what do I wear? Are people still wearing business attire at net networking events? What will people be shaking hands? What's what does networking look like now? This is a different world. Like, are you going to be able to talk to people up close or are people going to be fearful? I didn't even know what to expect when I walked into the, to the event, you know? So I'm like, oh, I'll just do business casual <laughs> do the middle of the road. This is Florida after all. And gauge the crowd and see how people are responding. And there were still a lot of people very professional who had gone back to what they knew, remembering how to engage socially, that social awkwardness that we talked about in one of our podcasts. That was just another example. It's just different, uh, but definitely good for the brain. It was really good. You felt like you were reconnecting with the world again. There's a variety of different things that it's kind of like, okay, what is it now? Because we've gone into Zoom casual, right? Going into those uncertain social situations, you think we're all in different places as far as what our comfort zone is. We're shaking hands, mask wearing, hugging, all of those things. That's why I say it's so easy to go back, me thinking, okay, so things are starting to open up a little bit more. What was I doing before? So I can start making those plans and realizing, wait a minute, that's how life was before. And to a certain extent, it's a certain amount of programming. And it's really kind of a 3D mindset. I really have been trying to sit in my high heart a little bit more with opening up some of those compartments and, and shining a light in it of, what compartments have I closed that I don't even remember that I closed because I was afraid or I wasn't enough or that contrast, that MMA drag queen contrast was there. And well, you can't be this and that, you know, a lot of people, you know, I'm a deeply spiritual woman, spirituality, and it's about my spirituality. It's not about any, anybody else, but some people are really surprised that, you know, I'm a very kind, compassionate, sweet woman. But at the same time, I like to cuss like a sailor. I love to drink. I like to party. And so a lot of times in people's minds, that, that's just like, how can that be? Right. Well, in this body, that's how it works. I'm all of those things. So I guess on, to a certain extent, I'm already living some of my contrasts. Yes, definitely. It's nice to know you've got a little bit of that gypsy blood in you too, like I do. Because we could, I mean, we were traveling, going to retreats and doing all kinds of stuff. So you were getting your fix, even though you were planted at home, you had that. Yeah. You've got a lot of facets. That's what makes you very uh, fascinating. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And so in your experience, I mean, what are some of the benefits when you do step out of that comfort zone? What are some of the things that are just worthwhile? What are the rewards that you get? when you step out of that comfort zone, like I mentioned the brain, the brain activity for me is huge. I notice a difference in, in the way I think and feel. I'm more alert, I'm more stimulated, more activated. How about you? Because a lot of my comfort zones are things that I've thought about doing, but have been hesitant because I'm not enough. What will they say? Who does she think she is? That stupid nonsense that we shouldn't be paying any attention to, but I'm trying to peel back one layer at a time. A lot of times it's a, it creates an inner rub in me to where I'm very aware that I'm not doing that thing. I'm not trying that thing. I'm not stretching myself. So for me, it gets to the point to where that becomes so uncomfortable internally that I'm like, I just got to do it. Regardless of what happens on the other side, if there's a success or even, I don't like failure, but something that doesn't maybe feel so good on the other side. One of the things that I realized over time was I knew that I needed to get more exercise. And so I've got this internal irritant. And then when I finally go do whatever, whether it's starting to go to the gym, whether it's training for something, I realized that when I finally started that, before I didn't realize it, but I had a little bitch in the back of my head saying, how come you're not? You know, you should. It's good for you. And I didn't realize how constantly she was hammering away at me, trying to motivate me 
to do something positive for myself. That's one of the things that I've learned stepping outside of my comfort zone is when I finally do that thing that's been bothering me internally, regardless of what the result is on the other side, I feel a pat on the back. Good. You finally did it. That gives me an energetic boost. And then you're getting on the other side, whatever it is, if, especially if there's what, something that feels very vibrant and shiny and it feels like success, then I get to reap those rewards too. And it's almost like basking in my own potential and realizing that I have stretched myself in uncomfortable ways and I have shown up for myself, it builds my self-esteem and my self-confidence. It's like your spirit, your soul is dancing because it, it got to do something worthwhile. And it took you stepping out and jumping out into the unknown and trusting that everything was going to be okay. You had some level of trust in yourself and your higher self. You were just rewarded with that self-worth because I really think it boils down to knowing our, our worth, knowing our self-worth. And are you worthy of whatever reward this is and what's it going to take to get there? Some things are just a passion that you've been called to that for whatever reason you haven't been exercising it. I know a lot of times we don't realize, and these are some of the things that I'm excavating right now, is there's been a lot up in my field about, I need triggers for memory. I'm not really good with, with memory. And so I need something to trigger it. And there've been a lot of things that have, have uh, that I've watched recently that have triggered memories from like childhood. One of the things that I realize is that oftentimes we have passions that we have put behind a closet door that we might have tried exercising earlier in our life, but maybe had a really bad experience. Maybe we were shamed or maybe we got embarrassed or something about maybe somebody said some comment, especially someone, a teacher or someone really important in your life that made an offhand comment, not realizing that that comment was going to dampen who you were and take part of your spirit away to where they might not ever try to do that thing again. And so that's one of the places I think that we can look for our passions is go back to who we've been before and maybe open up some of those old doors and ask, why aren't we doing that thing when that is still kind of a passion to us and recognizing that it's fear and shame that have shut us down and that if it really is still meaningful, whether it's painting or singing or being on stage or riding a horse, playing piano, whatever that is, to maybe crack those doors open, some of those memories and remind yourself. And so why am I not doing it anymore? And if it's because it was a bad experience that was painful, Going back and revisiting that to see if there's some way that you can reframe it, that you can look at it from a different angle and try to find a little bit of healing in that so that you're not still locking out something that has a lot of meaning in, for, in it for you just because you had a bad experience before and you don't want to ever be shamed like that again. We came here with a purpose. A lot of times those messengers are planted in our lives to see how dedicated we are <laughs> to fulfilling that purpose. And I know I'm uh, stepping out of my comfort zone. I experience growth and evolution spiritually. I evolve I, every time I evolve into somebody else and I exercise that potential of, of my divine nature when, when I do that, I know I want to do everything in my power to fulfill that sense of purpose while I'm here, because I don't know if I want to come back. 
this place is a mess. I, I'm ready to just move on, do my work from the other side, finished what I came here to do. I just do it, you know, <laughs> be it, do it, whatever, whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> I just ask for the guidance and the clarity to know what it is. I'm really not afraid of stepping into it and stepping out of being comfortable. I, I don't really want to be comfortable. I get bored. I get depressed. I get stagnant. I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing my work. I'm not fulfilling why I came here to be. I'm wasting time. I've, I've got very little time on this planet. You know, if I live to be a hundred, that's only a hundred years. That's not a lot of time to change the course of whatever ripple effect I came here to create. All I know is that's, that's what's nudging me forward. And in every day, I feel like, did I do enough? I, I don't feel like I am doing and being enough. And there's a sense of urgency that I'm feeling now more than ever. We've got to make an impact here and quickly. I think we're all being called in different ways. And I think all we can do right now is, is do those little things to step out of our comfort zone, because as we've heard many, many times, if not now, when? If not yeah. you, who? How do we step out? Okay, here I am on my couch. I've been a couch potato for two years. Now what? <laughs> How do I get off this couch? <laughs> I listened to Matt Kahn, and while you're contemplating an answer there, I listened to one of his recent broadcasts, and I really was inspired by it. It was, it was an energy activation type of broadcast. Something I do very similar when I'm doing workshops or facilitating a class is help people release some of the things that are not serving us, that are getting in the way, those barriers, the shame that you spoke of just recently. And he spoke of taking all your thoughts and putting them, he, he used the example of a jar. I typically use the example of a balloon, put it in a balloon because you can let it go and let it drift away. So put your thoughts into a balloon, just empty your mind, put your emotions, the feelings that you're not good enough. Put all those feelings into a balloon and let it drift away. Clear your heart of all those wounds, those emotional wounds. The desires. Oh, I want this and I want to have that. And when I do this, then I will be happy. Or when I have that, I will feel this way. It's temporary gratification for the most part. So put all those desires into another balloon and just let it drift away. Fears, the fear of maybe not fulfilling your purpose while you're here, the fear of feeling your purpose, and then what will people think? The fear of failing, any kind of fear that you may have, put that in a balloon and let it drift away. Regrets. I know I've had my share of regrets. I've looked back on my life and I should on myself all the time should have done this, should not have done that. <laughs> and so take those regrets that you feel, had you not done that, or had you done something differently, you'd be somewhere else, because it, it's not true. You are exactly where you need to be right now. So take those regrets that you've had along your life path, because those were just life lessons. Put them in a balloon and let it drift away. And so that you are left being an empty vessel, ready to receive the guidance, being in that present moment, your true, authentic, worthy self, capable of being your full potential capable and courageously able to step into that next version of who you are and whatever that means for your world. But I loved that exercise of just clearing it all out and take a deep breath and just be in the moment and be with yourself for just a moment before you take any action. I think that's really a great first step. 
Wow, that was a master class right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that's excellent. I really, really like that. I like the balloon analogy too, because I've used that a lot in meditation of putting, you know, just letting them the thoughts go in a balloon. That was really, really good. Yeah. I mean, you talk a lot about balance. How does one find the balance between managing the 3D world and then stepping out of the comfort zone? How do we balance and find that equilibrium within us? I think the first thing is to know yourself. Because I think a lot of times we don't realize how much the chatter in our head is other people's voices and how much those voices cause us to clamp down on what our desires are, what our passions are, what we want to do. So know yourself first. And while you're in that process, I'm not, I don't really like this phrase. There's so many phrases that I think they're overused, but you know, find your why. What is your motivation to step out of that comfort zone? What is that motivation? You know, is it because you want money, success, accolades on the other side of it? Some people, that's it. There's no judgment about that. That's how they want to make a living. Is it that for somebody like myself that I want to ease that inner friction that has just been there grinding on me and I'll just do anything at this point to get out from underneath it? Because for me, my life has been very small. I was traveling the world before the pandemic. My life has become very constricted because of my life, my family circumstances and things that I need to do for members in my family. This cocoon stage has been very constricting for me. And I have had to find ways to make peace, internal peace, so I'm not irritated and aggravated that I'm not doing the things that I want to do. That's been a big internal process. Part of it is figuring out why you want to do that thing so you, that you know what that motivation is, so that you know a little bit more about the whys that you want to step into it. So you talk about stepping outside of your comfort zone. I've had, like I said, watching you and the moving and the dating and all the things that you've done. And I have other girlfriends in my field that have also been doing the same thing. And as I've watched, I've been deeply inspired. It's held up a mirror to me of when you're not constricted anymore, Alicia, what do you want to do and what do you want to be? Because that constriction alone creates discomfort in me that once that becomes so uncomfortable, it's like, okay, I got to come out and I got to do that thing. So some, it's a deep dive, typically not a deep dive for me because, you know, just diving off the cliff often doesn't stick for me but baby steps, which ends up being a balance between both worlds. You haven't totally jumped in, but at the same time, you're sticking your toe in the water and you're giving it a try. So that's a way to ease your way into it without being totally horrified. But for others, you just need to make a really quick decision because that's the way you're going to challenge your comfort zone because you know some people are way up in their head and they process way too much and they'll process themselves right out of the want or the decision to go ahead and do what they want to do. So for some, just diving in, making a quick decision, signing up for that week-long immersive workshop that's going to be life-changing, but scares you to death because of the content that they're going to be visiting and the things they're going to cause you to self-excavate. Sometimes just going ahead and signing up for it, paying the money and knowing, well, I can't get that money back now, so now I'm committed. So there's different ways to play with that energy, right? And to step in, step out, ease into, dive in. I think there's a variety of different ways. It does, there's not only one way to do it. That's right. And I'm sitting here thinking of what I'm, what I can do next. And it's, you know, even if it is signing up for that 5k, that next race, sign up for that next thing, connect with people. I think that is something the human spirit needs right now. You mentioned the, your goddess girlfriends and our our circle. That's so valuable. Find that buddy. I mean, truth be told, I probably would not be doing this podcast this long, this consistently without you. Yeah. I think I would have found something else to put my energy in or another distraction or something. Certainly stepping out of our comfort zone, being with you has made it easier for me personally. You know, you've been my Thelma. 
you know, Thelma and Louise. Well, every yeah. Thelma needs a Louise, right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I know. So it's something as so simple as sitting in front of a video camera and recording ourselves and having conversation and then putting it out into the world publicly. You think, oh, wow, that's really nice. Well, it takes a lot of courage. So have that person. If it's just one person, if it's a circle, go find that group. If you don't have that supportive group, because they will be there for you and they'll get to exercise their passion by helping you as well. So it's a win-win <laughs> for sure. Yeah, great point. So you had Brad, if Brad wasn't a runner, you probably wouldn't have been running. And the beauty of it is, is that he's done it so long and he's just an excellent coach. But on top of that, like you said, it's one thing to have somebody that can kind of guide you about your shoes and how to dress and what to do at the race. There's another aspect of it to where when you're running and you're having that discomfort when you're first starting to have in, his input as somebody that's already walked that path to say, Hey, that isn't anything to worry about. That's normal. Mm -hmm. This too shall pass. Just keep with it. That makes a big difference. Huge. Cause it eliminates the fear. Like yeah. I was saying earlier, you know, running, I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack and just collapse on the side of the road here. But when, when you can hear that's normal, it's okay. It push, push through it. Your heart hasn't been exercised. It's a muscle. Okay. So now I can see where the heart is getting stronger. Having somebody who's been down that road before as a coach, having a personal coach in your life is awesome. And just to recap a couple of the other things that we talked about earlier, you know, don't overthink your decisions. I like what you said, just act on it, trying new and different things, keep that brain stimulated. If, if anything, just for that reason alone. So our brains don't go to mush. I know mine does when I don't do enough, I don't learn enough. Like when was the last time I learned something new or I was challenged by something? You're great at that. You're, you're always reading and bringing new information into the conversation. I, I'm inspired by you for that reason. So I'm like, eh, maybe I will read this article instead of just reading the bullet points, you know, which is what I'm notorious for. Just give me the facts and so I can move on. You're but so much that, like my husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We've got people like you in our lives that can just are good storytellers and share that knowledge <laughs> so well. <laughs> So, oh, that's so yeah, we, yeah, we shouldn't rely on our limited point of views. Expand yourself to learn new things, I think is another thing we can do to snap out of this comfort zone space. If you'll just go to your fears and what makes you uncomfortable, you'll find your discomfort zones, which will tell you where your comfort zones are. You know, so that's a really good way to start to try to detect where there might need be some changes that you can make to bring you a little bit more in alignment with who you say you want to be and what you want to do in the world. And, and some of that, it, especially after being so constricted for so many people, is stepping into new environments that you haven't been in before. Because truthfully, some of the environments that you have been in before can be scary because you haven't been stepping out for a while. Just doing things like that, maybe going to a different restaurant than you usually do or eating a different meal because our routines are where our comfort zones are. The timing of our day, what do we do first when we wake up in the morning? What do we do at work? What do we do when we come home? What meals do we have? Some people have every Monday night, they have spaghetti. Every Tuesday night, they have steak and they have routines like that. Some people need to eat their meals. They eat their meals at exactly the same time every day. Sometimes it's, it's the same meal, the same kind of conversations, even the same sex, right? I mean, <laughs> right. These are routines and comfort zones that we get into get <laughs> that we can just change up some of those kind of things. Do volunteer work if you don't know where to start. Yes. At least change your daily routine in some way. Yeah. You know, every day for me is, is a little bit different, which, which I love. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> you know, if I had to go sit in a cubicle and then go home, I, well, I would, I would go nuts. My oh, spirit that's couldn't, so sucking. wouldn't let me do that. It just, my spirit wouldn't let me do that. Yeah. So be open, be curious, uh, be courageous. Listen to our Courage is the New Sexy podcast for some courageous inspiration and curiosity is a superpower. <laughs> it is. Yes, You're right. It is. We, it is. It is a superpower. And, and we had a whole conversation about curiosity. Tune into that. 
because these are all things that will help you. These are characteristics that will help you step out of, of being so comfortable. So, yeah. well, and even okay. one of the things that dawns on me, even it, I, I mean, we don't think about it as a comfort zone, but having some of those uncomfortable conversations, mm-hmm. that's stepping Avoiding. outside your comfort zone. Yeah. Setting boundaries. If you've never been somebody to set boundaries, that's a stepping out of your comfort zone. So it doesn't have to be some big life altering thing that you're going out and you're going to go climb Mount Everest or do something like that. It's, it's about your personal challenge. It's about observing where you are comfortable, what you'd like to change, where those fears and discomforts are, and not judging them as negative. Just observe, hmm, look at that. I'd kind of like to do that, but I'm afraid. Why am I afraid? What is it about that? And what can I do if that thing is important to me? What can I do to try to either heal the fear or start to unravel some of the comfort there and ease my way into a different place of being Without judging yourself, you can really beat yourself up when you really feel that you're supposed to say you've got a beautiful voice and you've always felt that you've been called to be a singer, but yet you're really shy. There's a lot of actors that are introverts. So it can be really difficult to push yourself into that space of what you feel your calling is. Finding ways to heal what's been wounded or ease some of the uncomfortable obstacles that we often put in our way and we don't even realize it. Great closing thought there. Take your spirit and go on a little adventure (laughs) into the unknown and try it on for size. Even if it is having one of those courageous conversations that need to have an open, honest, heart-centered conversations of honesty, truth, and, and just not avoiding a situation whatever that is, any longer because of fear. Well, and even if you do avoid it, even if you are avoiding it, just observing it and saying, oh, you're still kind of staying away from that thing. You're Mm -hmm. still afraid and being gentle with yourself. Because one of the things I've realized lately, looking at self-talk, we talked in the last podcast about, I talk to myself in ways that I would never talk to somebody else because I'm a really kind person. But there are times when I'll find myself judging myself for not having the courage to do or be something. One of the ways that I have found recently, I've been visiting some places that don't feel so good inside. You know, whether I did something, whether it was foolish, whether it was maybe I was acting out of my shadow and I did it intentionally, whatever that was. And realizing that I... I'm very good at forgiving others and cutting them some slack. I always have had it in my head. I know that I'm supposed to cut myself some slack and I need to treat myself the way that I treat others, but I still, I still didn't have the reframing that I needed. One of the things that's come to me just within the last couple of days is, you know, I'm never big on right, wrong, good, bad, those kind of labels but still find myself slipping into judging myself with, you know, that was a bad thing to do or whatever. And so one of the reframes that I've come up with recently is forgiving myself, not because I did a bad thing. Sometimes it's just mistakes. I just didn't know better. But the word that's come to me that seems to go down easier and seems to accomplish what I'm looking to accomplish is forgiving myself for being naive. Mm and not knowing, not realizing what I was doing or saying at the time that maybe was inappropriate or caused other people to judge me. That's been a little bit softer way that I've been playing with some of my unraveling or some of my knots is forgive yourself for being naive in that situation. You really do give to yourself when you forgive yourself. It's a, it's a gift. I love that. And my chiropractor says labels are for cans, not people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't label yourself. Excellent. That's Isn't that excellent. great? I yeah. like that really well. So le- let the labels go. Don't label yourself as this, that, but stay in that observer and watch yourself go through the process of evolving beyond it or evolving through it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Out of, out well, of and one and one of the great people for helping us get out of those comfort zones because a lot of times those comfort zones we stay there because of shame or feeling vulnerable or embarrassment, something like that is Brene Brown. Mm -hmm. You know, she works a lot with having courage, especially having courage in the midst of feeling vulnerable or feeling shame. She, she wrote that book, Dare to Lead. She's got several different books, but as a resource of somebody to watch Ted talks or look for YouTube videos, if you want to start to challenge those comfort zones, Brene Brown's a great place to start to get tips. And she's so inspiring and she's so funny. Yeah, she's great. She's, <laughs> she's, a, great she's a researcher, researcher. kind of like yeah. you. She's done some incredible studies. I uh, had the uh, honor of meeting her at a conference. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. Really? Sign, sign Very cool. I know. I know. We've met cool people just like you. In <laughs> fact, fun fact about oh. Alicia. Let's do fun facts. All right. You actually, I know our last podcast, we talked about a lot of modern day difference makers, if you will. And you worked with one of the most world famous at Oprah.com. I used to manage back in the old days of, the, of technology and the internet. I used to do live chats and manage message boards there. I mean, people have always come to me my whole life. People have come to me since I was just young, a teenager. But that is the environment where I started to really get the mirror held up and st people started to tell me, look, there's some things that you seem to know and understand and be able to articulate that seems to be a bit of a gift. And so that's where I started coming into myself a little bit more. It was, it was just, it was a great, great experience. Yeah, yeah. you were doing Ask Alicia columns before <laughs> before it became a thing that's true that's true yeah, I love yeah. that that there yeah. are others that recognized your gifts and put you in the perfect role I, I that's perfect yeah but that no, was, it was cool. a fun time yeah. I spent a few years there that was mm -hmm. really good got to go see the show and all that kind of stuff oh. but hearkening back to the beginning of our conversation here and challenging yourself and entering some potentially scary, vulnerable situations. Fun fact about Angel is that she was on the dating game, which that's a big deal. I'll tell you what, girlfriend, that takes a lot of courage to not only just show up like that and be talking to strangers, but also to have it televised. How did you do that? Oh, let me tell you something. I had just moved to Los Angeles. I was just auditioning, going to all these auditions. I didn't know what I was doing. And the dating game was one of them, right? So I show up and there's a ton of people there, huge room full of people. And then they pull you outside in groups and, uh, you know, they want to see your level of energy and everything. Well, I just, you know, I was a professional cheerleader at that time, yes. I had a ton of energy. And next thing you know, they call me two days later. They're like, we have a cancellation. Will you be on our show? And I'm like, like they said, you know, when you left the audition, oh, we'll call you within the next six months. Like oh it, it, there was no urgency. Two nice. days later, I got a call. And so I was like, yeah, of course. And they're like, okay, we're going to be filming this on Friday. I'm like, it's Tuesday. <laughs> like, okay. They're like, we need you to come up with 20 dating game questions oh I'm you're like, perfect for that I'm like, i have to come up with my own questions I mean, like, <laughs> don't you have writers for this and they're like no you come up with your i'm like oh my gosh so i'm i didn't I'm, know that well yeah so i had to come up so I'm, i mean there's stupid questions of course they pick the most stupid questions that i could come up with it's midnight i'm still going looking at the clock going all right if you were a clock what part of the clock would you be? I'm writing it down. I mean, it's a dumb question. Of course they chose that one, right? And, uh, and that's, <laughs> yeah, so you get there. I'm very nervous. This is my first televised debut, technically in front of the camera. They have a little bit of a script that you're interacting with the host. And it was kind of an in interim host. And he was really funny, kind of a David Letterman kind of personality. My defense mechanism when I'm nervous is sarcasm. <laughs> so <laughs> another fun fact. <laughs> I, I watched that video. I'm like, wow, I'm really sorry being sarcastic. Like, gosh, that's, you know, I'm kind of a nice person most of the time, but you put me in an uncomfortable situation and I, that's my defense mechanism. So it was kind of funny. I started getting real sarcastic 
with these guys asking them the questions and their responses. And uh, I'm like, that just, that's just nerves. And I probably did not look like the nicest contestant <laughs> that I ever <laughs> showed up, but it was fun. It was so much fun. I won a trip to uh, Acapulco. Right. Never went on the trip uh, because no. it was six months later. The show was filmed in October, aired in February. We had to wait until hurricane season was over. And then all that time went by. I started getting really involved, started working for a casting company and was able to cast myself on all kinds of things, commercials and industrial films. And uh, I was in an acting showcase and I, I had so much going on that I couldn't just go to Acapulco. <laughs> I just couldn't leave. I called the guy I'm like, look, I know we've got this trip coming up. He's like, yeah, my girlfriend's not happy about it. Oh, I'm like, oh, you got a girlfriend now. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that you had a boyfriend. No, (laughs) no, definitely not on my uh, list of things to do while I was in Los Angeles. (laughs) Yeah. So I said, I got an idea. Why don't you take your girlfriend and go on the trip? And he's like, no. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have plenty of opportunities to go to Acapulco in my life you go have a great time. He's like, that is so cool. I mean, <laughs> I'm in my fifties. I have yet to see Mexico, but that's okay. That's okay. But that's, yeah, the dating game. Uh, talk about stepping out of your comfort zone for sure. But I was used to it at that time, performing in front of 25,000 people that prepared me for that. I had been on the radio. There was always on the, you know, always a camera pointing at you for for the couple of years that I did that stuff as a professional cheerleader. So the dating game was a whole new experience for sure. But thanks for highlighting that. And the camera just loves you. You just light up. And I know why they called you back. I mean, you're just gorgeous and you've got the smile. It's like the sun. It's just so radiant and funny that you went to sarcasm. It's interesting (laughs) because when I was, when I was young, when I was in my teens and twenties, I was very sarcastic too. Mm-hmm. I, I tempered that over time. I think some yes. people would be surprised to find out how sarcastic I was. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> wow. Well, this was so much fun. I so loved talking about this because every time we talk about whatever topic it is, it helps me to create more awareness around it. Am yeah. I getting too comfortable with where I'm at? Am I not fulfilling what I came here to do and came here to be. So thank you for the great conversation, the great insights and uh, call to action for all of you. Just identify that one thing. Maybe there's an area in your life where you're becoming a little bit too comfortable and a little too complacent and you can make one little change, one little baby step. We encourage you to do that. And sure, you're more than welcome to share with us on our Facebook page where we're creating a community and some dialogue around these topics. And so one of the fears we need to face, I think that both of us had, we tried it before, but we still need to do it. I know it's up and center to me. That was one of the things that got on earth when I was considering this topic is doing a live chat. That scares me to death, especially after we already tried it and we couldn't figure out the Facebook thing. It scares me because it's like, oh, that didn't go very well last time. And I was already scared. And so now I'm even more scared. And it's something that we need to do. Well, we're getting together in a couple of months and we will have the opportunity first time since we've been doing Chicks Talking Shift to be face to face. So that's going to change the dynamic. We definitely are going to have to push ourselves to try some new things at that time. And I think doing some kind of live event uh, is definitely in the cards for us. Yeah. So. All right, wow. Thelma. I'm yeah. In. All right, Louise. I'm in. <laughs> I love you. I, I appreciate you. Thank you for being on this journey with me. And thank you all of you for being on this journey with us. Go out and be your best self. And uh, wherever you go, just keep raising the vibes. World needs you. Bye. Bye.